Well, good morning. How are you doing today? This is Brother Steve back again for another study, another devotional study, as we're looking through the week of Jesus's passion. We think about things that he endured that week so that he could be our savior. It was a tough week. We come and we think about last night being Monday. We think of some of the things that went on Monday in the life of Christ. Well, first of all, there would have been the confrontation with the Jewish leaders. There would have been healing and the preaching and the teaching, the parables and stuff, but also there would have been some confrontation that would have gone on in the life of Jesus that day. So Monday was a very busy day. As Monday began to end, I believe with all my heart, things began to fall in place for Judas to do his terrible, evil deed. And I believe it probably started on Monday night. It was finished there on Tuesday night, whenever he betray the Lord Jesus Christ and turn him over so he could be crucified the following day. When we think about these things, it's important that we realize we got to get the word in us and not only us in the word, but the word in us. And so this verse I would like for you to look at today, I'm trying different ways to put verses up here so that you can see them. And uh, here you go. Jesus is talking here and he says, when when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. John 13, 21. When we think about this, <clears throat> Jesus Christ was, this was Tuesday night before he would die for our sins. And so as we, we think about these kind of things, we think of the betrayer. We think of the things that were going on in the life of Jesus. Why, as I said, Monday was a very busy day in his life. The healing, the preaching, the teaching, uh, the confrontation with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then also, we now realize that uh, the evil plot was set against him to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. You know, Jesus, uh, sorry, Judas betrays Christ. Uh, and you go back, you can look at it in Matthew 26, Mark 14, and Luke chapter 22. You can see the various occasions where he was, uh, had this evil plot to betray Jesus. We realize that Judas probably came to the place in his life where he valued money, things of the world, more than he valued Jesus Christ. By even more than he valued a human being, a fellow human being, uh, for what he was betraying Jesus and turning him over for what would happen to Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were quite excited. They were delighted because I believe they had a desire to capture Jesus. They had a desire to find him some ways, but Jesus had a way of slipping out at night and they did not know where he slipped in, away to. Uh, he had a, a secret location outside the city that he would go to each night. They, they would have arrested him at night. They would not have arrested him during the daytime, during the, his public ministry while it was going on. So they were delighted when Judas came with this plot to betray Jesus. He was going to let them know where Jesus was going to be, and he was going to betray him with a kiss. And we all know what takes place that night. We'll maybe talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. But G Judas comes along, and, and we look at Judas. Judas, what a, what a sad story. What a mystery when we think about Judas. I mean, you talk about a man who walked with Jesus Christ for three years. He saw the miracles. He, he not only saw the miracles, he saw the compassion of our Lord and Savior. On every turn, Judas had the first-hand knowledge of what Jesus Christ was doing. Uh, he had all the evidence he needed to convince him that not only Jesus Christ was the Savior, but Jesus Christ was God. He realized that Jesus Christ was more than just a, a man. He had to, seeing the things that Christ had done. Somebody might ask, well, why do you think Judas did it? Well, some will say he did it for greed, that he did it for money. He heard the, the, the clanging of the silver and the coins and the pot, and uh, that's what he wanted, money, money, money. Well, that might be. Some will say, well, you know, he was really disappointed because the whole time Judas was a zealot and he wanted to have uh, 
It's a revolution. He wanted to revolt against Rome, and, and he's realizing that Jesus is not leading them to that point now, and so Jesus must be turned over to the high priest and, uh, and betrayed. No, I, I really, those are powerful thoughts, but one thing we do know for sure is that Judas, although he outwardly appeared to be committed to Jesus Christ, here's what he had. He had a rebellious heart. You know, he, he, he came to the place where he was an unbelieving, rebellious heart. You know, there's another verse I have for you here. Let's see if you can look at it, see if I can do a better job holding it up here for you this time. Look what it says here. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. Wow. When we look into the life of Judas, we see that deceitful heart. We see the one whose heart was poisoned by wickedness and uh, had that deceitful craving, desperately wicked to do what he did to Jesus Christ. You know, hopefully you and I can learn from his example. Instead of being just an outward form of religion, May we have it deep in our hearts. May we realize the truth that Jesus Christ is God. You know, as I think about things, I have to ask myself this question or ask you the question along with me. Is it possible for a Christian be to betray Jesus? Or maybe ask it this way. In what ways can you and I betray Jesus? In what areas and how should we be very careful to watch out so that we do not betray Jesus? our Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Well, undoubtedly, we can betray him when we feel like we have a license to sin. <laughs> when we feel like sin no longer matters to Christ and we can live any which way we want. Child of God, I want to tell you something. I love you today. And just as we are trying to keep people away from church so that people can be safe right now and get past this coronavirus, child of God, I love you this morning and I need to tell you the truth. You need to realize as you hear these words this morning that sin ought not reign in our mortal bodies. We, we ought to be convicted over sin, and, and uh, we ought to constantly be in the battle to fighting the flesh in our lives. You know, and, and it is a constant battle. I will tell you the truth. It's, it's constantly we are fighting this situation. But here's the truth. The truth is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And folks, listen. We don't need a license for sin. When you and I act like we have a license for sin and sin doesn't matter in our lives, we are betraying the very Christ whom we serve. Another way I think we betray Christ is when we compromise. When we compromise truth, when we compromise uh, conviction, when we compromise our lifestyle, I, I believe that's a slap in the face to the Savior, and we need to be careful about it. We need to watch out for compromise whenever it rears its ugly head up, and uh, we, we need to be aware of that. And then probably another way we come, we uh, betray the Christ is this, when you and I are more interested in building our little kingdoms instead of building his kingdom. Folks, listen, I'm going to tell you something. He calls us in to the ministry to build his kingdom and uh, to live in his world and be careful of just isolating ourselves and living in our own little world. And we need to think about those kind of things uh, today. So, Something to think about. I'd like for you to think about it. You know, this is our second second uh, morning with Pastor Steve. This is Tuesday, April the 7th. And, uh, you know, yesterday we were doing all this. And even today I'm trying to learn some other things and learn how to do this just right. Yesterday we got off the air and gone on to work before we even had a word of prayer. So this morning, I'd like for you to bow your head, or this evening, whenever you are looking at this time, and have a prayer time with me. Heavenly Father, we realize how priceless our Lord Jesus Christ is. Lord, help us to value him above everything. Lord, we see here in the life of Judas, Lord, for some reason, and undoubtedly, because of the deceitfulness of the heart, he had turned against Christ. He no longer saw value in Jesus Christ. Father, may we not be that way. Father, 
may we not be betrayers of Christ. Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. That, Lord, that we would see the power of your love. That, Lord, we would realize the importance of walking with you daily. Father, may your sweet Holy Spirit convict us. Father, may we draw ever closer to him. Lord, there are times we say things we shouldn't. Lord, help us to be more spirit-surrendered. Father, I, I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, speak to these good people. Lord, we had 15 or so yesterday that watched the program. Lord, maybe today it's only four or five. Or, Lord, maybe it's even grown to 20. Father, wonderful people, good people. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you would bless them. I pray, Lord, today that your spirit will be upon them. And, Father, that we would walk in victory. Lord, we think of the things that will transpire today in the life of Christ 2,000 years ago, this Tuesday before his suffering. Father, today, once again, he'll prepare for a Passover. Once again, Father, we'll look at how that he'll wash the disciples' feet. Father, we see as he'll go out into the garden and pray. Father, may we gain from his life today as we think about these things and put them in our hearts and lives. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for this gloriously beautiful day. And thank you for these folks. In Jesus' name, amen. Think about it. We'll see you soon.